Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if an hourglass weighs more when the sand's at the bottom versus when the sand's at the top. And I'd like to thank Mel Science for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on in the video. Now I have an hourglass here that is completely enclosed, so it's completely sealed in a glass tube. And as the sand falls, it moves from the top to the bottom. Now one way to test the weight of an object is to put it in water and see how well it floats. So I put some weights on the hourglass so it just barely sinks when you put it in water. So when I put the float in like this, it sinks to the bottom. Pull it back up with my magnet. But now watch what happens when I flip it around so the sand's on the top. It floats. But after a while, after more sand falls to the bottom, you can see it starts to sink. When the sand is on the bottom, it easily sinks. Now pull it back up with my magnet. Now flip it over so the sand is on the top. Let it go with my magnet. You can see that it floats. But now watch what happens when we let the sand fall to the bottom. After some of the sand falls to the bottom, it sinks. So I literally cannot get this to sink if it's right side up. It floats there until some of the sand falls to the bottom of the hourglass and then it sinks. So does that mean that the hourglass actually got heavier? Now remember that for something to float, it has to weigh less than the amount of water that it displaces. So that means that the only way that it can change from floating to sinking is if this thing actually changed weight. It's a completely sealed system, so it's not losing the amount of air inside of it or anything. So it had to have changed weight, right? Before I explain what's going on here, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Mel Science. If you like my channel and other experiments you've seen me do on my channel, then you're gonna love Mel Science kits. Let me show you one of my favorite experiments from their physics kit. So I have this paper clip here. I'm gonna bend it out of shape. So I completely bent it out of shape here. Watch what happens when I put it in the water. So the reason this did this is because this is nitinol. It's a shape memory alloy. So if you heat it up, it remembers the shape it was in. Bend this straight, stick it in, and it bends back. I highly recommend Mel Science Kits because one of the best ways to learn something is by doing it yourself and experimenting yourself. And their science kits bring those experiments to you at home. Mel Science Kits are a subscription kit that's sent to you monthly. They have a lot of different kits available under their chemistry section, their physics section, and even a kids section as well. So if you want to check out Mel Science Kits, click the link in my description and type in the code ACTIONLAB for 50% off your first month. Now let's get back to our experiment. Now I'm not the only one that's discovered this weird phenomenon. At the Iring Science Center at Brigham Young University, they have this same contraption. You can see that when the hourglass has the sand at the bottom, it sinks to the bottom. And when the sand is at the top, it floats. But then eventually as the sand falls, it sinks to the bottom again. So how is this possible? How can the hourglass seemingly change weight without losing or gaining any weight from the system? Well, let's put the hourglass on a scale and see if it's actually changing weight during it. Okay, when the sand is at the bottom, we get 12.76 grams. Now when the sand is at the top, we also get 12.76 grams. So there's no significant difference between whether the sand is at the top or at the bottom. So what in the world's going on here? We showed that there's no weight change so it couldn't become more buoyant or less buoyant since it's a completely sealed glass tube. So how is it that in one instance it sinks and the other one it floats? The reason that it floats when we put it like this is because we're adding another force to the system and that force is friction. So when you have the weight on the top, the system is inherently unstable. It wants to flip over. 
And so if you let it flip over, then the weight is at the bottom and then it can sink like normal. But if you don't let it flip over, then you have to push against it with something. I can do that with my fingers or the side of a tube or something. And in that case, we have another force acting on it. And that force is friction. And the frictional force against the wall is actually pushing upward. Now it may be a little confusing of why the frictional force would be pushing it upward when it's just leaning against a wall. But let me explain what I mean by that. So I have this shoe here. Now normally if I let the shoe go, it's gonna fall. But if I push against the shoe, like when this hourglass is being pushed against the wall, you can see it stays in place. Now the only way it could stay in place is if there's something pushing it upward against the force of gravity pulling it downward. So the frictional force is pointing this way and gravity is pointing this way. This is comparable to when you have a shoe just sitting on a table with no weight on it, you can easily pull it this way. But if I put some weights on it, then it becomes a lot harder to pull. So I can't pull it now, just like gravity couldn't pull the shoe when I was pressing it against the wall. So if you don't want the hourglass to flip over when the sand is at the top, you always have to let it lean against something. And whenever it leans against something, then that introduces a new static force or a static friction that's pushing it upward and it's helping increase its buoyancy. So it actually can float because of that little bit of extra force on it. But then once the sand moves to the bottom, it doesn't want to flip anymore. And so that friction becomes less and less on the side of it until it can sink down. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.